Okay. So we are here um, at LifeQuest. This is our Facebook uh, lunch time, uh, lunch and learn speaker uh, with Dr. Timothy Nutt. And we're going to start off today talking about the history of UAMS, which, you know, we're in Little Rock. We Everybody we know uses and um, walks by or drives by UAMS every day, but I don't know that much about the history, so I'm going to be really interested in, to knowing about this. And apparently, Timothy Nutt has a lot of background in this area and is um, <laughs> infinitely qualified to discuss it, as you usually will see. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, his bio so you'll know who we have as our guest today. Tim, Tim Nutt is the director of the Historical Research Center at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. So they have our History Research Center in UAMS. I didn't know that. Previously, he was employed as the head of special collections at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville was the founding deputy curator of the Butler Center for Arkansas Studies. That's fascinating. Um, at the Central Arkansas Library System. He is served as the founding manager, editor, and staff historian of the award-winning online Encyclopedia of Arkansas, which many of us know and refer to often. He's a native of Bigelow, Arkansas, just down the road, and received his education from the University of Central Arkansas with a master's in library science with an emphasis in, on archives. He's a past president of the Arkansas Historical Association and a certified archivist. So, gee, I don't know. Are you qualified to give this talk today? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to ask me again. You'll have to ask your uh, the attendees after the uh, presentation to what they think. <laughs> I, I sure it sure sounds like it, and we're delighted to have you today. Um, so, he is going to be sharing with us some of his information. And um, welcome to LifeQuest. Uh, we're so we're so thrilled to have you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm hoping you can still hear me. We uh, we had a little bit of a uh, few technical difficulties, so um, but we we powered through those, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Leah, and all the folks at LifeQuest uh, for the invitation to be here. Um, UAMS has a fascinating history, and um, I'll be it's. I'm glad to be able to have the opportunity to talk about just how fascinating that history is. Now, today, of course, as Leah mentioned, we drive by UAMS pretty much every day, um, but most people don't know what all the blood, sweat, and tears that went into making what UAMS is today. Today, of course, we think of it as a comprehensive health sciences center, educating tomorrow's doctors and other health professionals, and employing, it's one of the, it's the state's largest employer with over 11,000 people statewide. Um, it impacts every corner of the state from uh, Northwest Arkansas, Fayetteville, all the way to Lake Village down in Southeast Arkansas, Paragould up in Northeast, all the way down to Texarkana in the Southwest. Um, of course, the main campus is here in Little Rock. We have a, a satellite campus up in Northwest Arkansas now in Fayetteville, but we also have regional centers that are scattered around the state as well. So it's hard when you, when you think about UAMS, it's hard to imagine Arkansas without UAMS, but the early years there, there was, a, there was um, some doubt as to whether the medical school, when it was first established in the late 1800s, whether it was going to survive or not. And it was it was iffy there for a few minutes or a few years, a few years, I should say. So I'm going to walk you through it. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask at the end of the uh, end of the presentation. Now, what we now know as UAMS was founded in 1879. Prior to 1879, there was no medical education in the state of Arkansas. If um, there was, if someone wanted to become a doctor, they had to go out of state. Either, mostly uh, the folks went to St. Louis, the University School of Medicine, which was established in 1836, the first medical school west of the Mississippi River, or uh, the Tulane Medical College, the University of Louisiana, which had been established just a, a couple of years um, before the St. Louis University School of Medicine. They also went to Nashville sometimes. But a lot of the doctors that uh, 
came into practice or started practicing in Arkansas, really didn't even have any formal schooling or education. Uh, many of the doctors just apprenticed with, the, uh, with a practicing doctor and just learned on the job. And then when they felt like that they had learned what they could, they put out their own shingle and, and started their own practice. So in the late 1870s, when the med school started, there actually weren't very many doctors in Little Rock. Um, or about 25, 25, 30 doctors in Little Rock, maybe a few more scattered around the state. Um, but for the most part, the medical um, field in Arkansas was pretty sparse. Now, those physicians that I mentioned, the 25 or 30 physicians that were in Little Rock at the time, they were really a cohesive group. A lot of them had come in from out of state. Very few of them were actually born in the state. But um, so in the early, uh, well, the year after the Civil War, 1866, the Little Rock physicians um, decided that they wanted to create or establish a medical society. So in 1866, the Pulaski County Medical Society was established. Actually, it was called the Little Rock and Pulaski County Medical Society simply because of the small number of physicians that were located in Little Rock and Pulaski County. So they included the whole county in that. Two of the individuals involved in the establishment of the Medical Society, James A. James A. Dibrell Sr. and Philo O. Hooper, two names that you're going to hear about later um, as we talk about the medical school. But we have to talk about, before we actually get into the actual founding of the medical school, we have to get a little bit of a background because there's a lot of controversy, a lot of chaos in those first few years uh, leading up to the establishment and the few years after the establishment of the medical school. So in 1870, the Arkansas State Medical Association was established. It was established by Drs. Hooper, um, Dr. Um, Augustus L. Brysocker, Claiborne Watkins, Roscoe Jennings, among others, including Dibrell that, I, that you also saw on the previous screen. So they came together in 1870 and created this statewide medical society. They wanted to bring together all the county, all the local and county medical societies for a conference every year to uh, learn from each other. And you're probably thinking, what does the Arkansas Medical Society have to do with the founding of UAMS? Most of the people who were involved in that Arkansas Medical Society were, were instrumental in the creation of UAMS. But, and you'll notice on your screen that you says the Arkansas Medical Society, it says it organized 1875, and you're thinking to yourself, well, Tim, you just said it was founded in 1870. There's a reason why those dates differ, because in 1872, a controversy engulfed both the Pulaski County Medical Association and the statewide organization. In that year, a controversy uh, erupted over the admission of a hot springs physician to the Pulaski County Medical Society. One of the members of the Pulaski County Medical Society um, put forth uh, a name from hot springs, a doctor from hot springs to be admitted to the society. That actually led to a debate among the society and it actually split the Pulaski County Medical Society in, in, into um, two different organizations. Those who disagreed with the admission of this hot springs doctor left, created their own medical society called the College of Physicians and Surgeons. That, in turn, that, that fracture in the Pulaski County Medical Organization led to a fracture with the Arkansas Medical Association. So these two factions, the College of Physicians and Surgeons, the Pulaski County Medical Association, they each founded their own medical association. So you had the Arkansas Medical Society and then you had the State Medical Association. So they were separate for many years until uh, 1875 and they came together 
um, or excuse me, in 1879, they came together again. They rejoined forces because they saw the need for a medical school. So they put aside their differences. The two statewide organizations merged into one, the Pulaski County Medical Association and the College of Physicians and Surgeons merged back together and became one county organization again. And that was all due because they wanted to put forth the idea, they wanted to gain support for the idea of a medical school. And they could not do that if the statewide and the county uh, medical so medical societies, excuse me, were fractured. So in spring of 1879, they got together, these leaders got together and they decided that the state needed a medical or a medical school. They, those, those who wanted to be physicians did not need to be going out of state, sometimes never coming back to the state. They needed to stay in state and be educated here. The question then became, where should a school be located? Now, everyone agreed, everyone in those discussions agreed that the medical school should be associated with the university. That's an easy question. That's an easy answer, you would think, right? There, at that time, there were pretty much only two colleges, universities in Arkansas. You had the Arkansas Industrial University in Fayetteville, which had been founded in 1871. And you had St. John's College here in Little Rock. Now, the Fayetteville folks thought that the medical school should be associated with the Arkansas Industrial University and be located in Fayetteville. The Little Rock folks said, no, it needed to be in the center of the state. There was no point in sending the establishing a medical school to the far flung regions of Arkansas when it was so hard uh, to um, travel to that part of the state. And there were they, there were differing ar arguments about what the benefits of having it in Little Rock versus the benefits of having it in Fayetteville associated with the university. The uh, Arkansas Gazette, the statewide newspaper, noted that, quote, a medical college will add a material interest to our growing city. They were supporting it being in Little Rock. It will attract students from a wide circle, not limited by state lines and ed aid directly this rapidly increasing commercial center. So the Gazette was supportive of all this. So as I mentioned, uh, the University of Arkansas was established in 1871. St. John's College had been established in 1850s as a Masonic uh, institution. It was the first institution of higher education chartered in the state. And, um, but it ran into some problems during the Civil War. It was located near the U.S. Arsenal in Little Rock. If you know where MacArthur Park is, there's a map here on your screen. Um, uh, looking south across the river into Little Rock, and you'll see uh, St. John's College circled on your screen in the upper left. And then in the inset, you see a little more uh, detailed of St. John's College. Now, this St. John's College, just as a clarification, is not the same St. John's that is the headquarters of the Catholic Diocese of Little Rock. It's two totally separate institutions. St. John's, as I mentioned, had, had been established in the 1850s, uh, but it had, it had floundered during the Civil War. It was overtaken by the U.S. federal troops when Little Rock fell in 1863, and it was made into a hospital. Uh, that time. After the Civil War, it was turned returned to the Masons, but it really never regained its footing, however. Its educational mission uh, continued, but it never had the stability that it did be behind or before the Civil War. So soon the organizers of the medical school realized that St. John's College was not going to be able to host and uh, sponsor a medical school. So when that became evident, where else could they look? They had to look to the University of Arkansas, Arkansas Industrial University in Fayetteville. So Hooper, Drs. Hooper, Jennings, Watkins, and other backers, they started to talk with the Board of Trustees at Arkansas Industrial University. And they proposed to the university that the medical, medical school be affiliated with the university but be located in Little Rock. 
And so this was a, a brand new idea. And th then they said, well, how can this work out? So they began no negotiations. And in mid 1879, they finally agreed that AIU board agreed to let these eight physicians who are, who are featured on your screen to use the name Arkansas Industrial University as part of their medical school. It was not, it was, there was no way, the only way it was affiliated with the university with, with, was with its name. It was not supported by the university. It was not an official department of the university. Nevertheless, the Arkansas Industrial University Medical Department was established in 1879 as a proprietary school, meaning that students who attended the school bought tickets for the lectures they wanted to uh, attend. Um, it was a private corporation and these were the uh, stockholders in that corporation. They con considered the founders of UAMS. They drew all their money together. Uh, uh, Drs. Bentley, Jennings, Hooper, McAlmont, Bryce Socker, Dibrell, James Southall, and Claiborne Watkins, Watkins all put, pulled their money together. And um, they pulled their money together and then they decided, well, once they had the approval of the Board of Trustees to use the name, they had settled on Little Rock, what's the next step? They needed to find a building uh, to serve as the medical school. Now, it turned out that finding a building was actually easier uh, than they had anticipated. And they soon set their sights on the Sparandio rest restaurant and hotel located at 2nd and uh, Louisiana Streets in downtown Little Rock. The Sparandio build building was less than 10 years old, it had been built in 1873. It had been uh, established as a restaurant by uh, uh, Ferrari Sparandio. Um, and it was considered one of the finest buildings in the state of Arkansas, three-story building. Um, the restaurant was considered uh, high-end. He was known for his wine choices, his oysters. Uh, and so, but for some reason, that successful restaurant uh, failed in 1879 or 1875. The building became open by 1879. It was vacant and the medical uh, school founders looked at this building and said, this is what we can use for the medical school. So they put together, they drew their, re, uh, put their money together, $5,000, they bought that building um, and uh, it turned it into the first medical school in Arkansas. Each of the, each of the stockholders put up $625, um, which today would be about $16,000 a piece for it. Um, so, but they had a little time, you know, this happened in mid July, the medical school had to start in the summer, in the fall of 1879. So they didn't have a whole lot of time to get things together. They quickly rushed, made the building as, um, uh, renovated it as much as they could so they could get people, uh, the students to come in. So they opened on October 3rd, 1879 with an enrollment of 23 men. While some women had applied to the medical department, their applications had been denied based on their gender. And it would nearly, it would be nearly 20 years later before a woman was admitted to the medical school. The semester was an abbreviated one of only five months. And on March 3rd, 1880, the first commencement of the new school was held. Uh, there was one graduate, Dr. Tom Pinson, and he was presented with a borrowed sheepskin diploma since his had not yet arrived yet. Now, in this first school, they, the educational part of it went, uh, activities went on in the Sparandio building. The clinical part of it was actually, um, you, they actually used the Phones Brother Hardware Warehouse um, which was directly across the alley from the medical school. The, the clinic was located in the back of the hardware store. And so the uh, medical students would uh, do their clinical work on, on bodies and, uh, you know, study anatomy and things like that in this clinic on the backside of the Phones Brothers warehouse, which is kind of interesting if you think about it, that a medical student would learn uh, how to perform, perform surgery 
in a hardware store. Now, by 1890, um, 109 physicians had graduated from the school and interest was so high that a new school was constructed at the corner of 2nd and Sherman Streets in downtown Little Rock. Despite this success, though, there were still distrust in the need uh, in, in the need in the rural areas of Arkansas for a medical school. The Arkansas House of Representatives in 1883 even passed a resolution declaring, quote, medicine and surgery are humbugs and all medical colleges should be declared nuisances and injurious, end quote. The medical, the new building at 2nd and Sherman Streets cost about $15,000 was three stories high, included a lecture hall and amphitheater with dissection rooms on the third floor. It was connected to the city hospital, which allowed for additional and a different clinical experience than the earlier Thones Brother warehouse. Now the medical school went into the 20th century. They were flush with success. They were doing really well. And in 1901, the school graduated its first female graduate, Miss Annie Shopik. In 1906, though, a new medical school in Little Rock as a rival to the Arkansas Industrial University uh, Medical School was established, known as the College of Physicians and Surgeons. You'll remember that name earlier. That was a totally different, that was an organization. This is a totally different institution, uh, but used the same name of College of Physicians and Surgeons. It was housed in the uh, former Maddox Seminary for Females. Um, if you know Little Rock, if you round the curve of Cantrell, uh, La Harpe Boulevard, uh, the, the viaduct, and you're, you turn that corner heading west and you see the um, hangar house on your right, the building set right there by the, by the river. Um, now, because the Little Rock could not support both medical schools, so the quality of both medical schools really suffered uh, because of this rivalry. By 1909, the Arkansas Medical Society called for the merger of the two medical schools because the conditions were so poor in both of them. In 1911, the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the UA School of Medicine agreed to combine their resources, mainly based on a 1910 report by Abraham Flexner. Commissioned by the Carnegie Foundation, the report analyzed the quality of medical education. The Flexner report was not kind to either of the medical schools, citing their lack of clinical facilities and instructional materials. In his summary, Flexner wrote, quote, both the Arkansas schools are local institutions in a state that has at this date three times as many doctors as it needs. Neither has a single redeeming feature. And it is incredible that the state university should permit its name to shelter one of them. So he, uh, Flexner, Flexner uh, suggested or he recommended that the schools uh, merge the medical school move to Fayetteville. That obviously did not happen, but the two schools did merge um, and the university actually took over official handling of the medical department. Um, for 32 years, it had just been using the name. Now it became an official part of the University of Arkansas. Um, and since from 1911 on, any physician that had graduated from the College of Physicians and Surgeons was considered an alumnus of UAMS. Now in 1913, uh, the Arkansas legislature passed a resolution to make the old state house available for use as a medical school. The new capital had been built. All the state offices had been moved out of uh, the old state house. And so the medical school moved in. And, you, and as you can imagine, the old state house was not very conducive to a medical school, but it was used until 1935. Um, the issue with many of the schools up to 1935 was the lack of clinical facilities. And that was especially true uh, with the old state house. The, the, the second site, the second in Sherman, they were near the, the city hospital, but that too ran into problems. Um, and so the students ended up having to use the local hospital, St. Vincent's, the Baptist State Hospital, as some of their uh, clinical facilities. But in 1935, when they moved out of the old state house, a new building was built uh, downtown at 12th and McAlmont, and a hospital was built uh, directly next door to it. Um, and um, so that really provided the first time that there was a clinical um, 
a, a component to the medical school that was um, planned at the same time as the medical school. Now, so this one, the, third, the fourth location, uh, they stayed in this building until 1956. Um, this building is approximately about where the law school is right now. Uh, so what happened in 1956, they decided they needed a new building. And so they, there was no plans, there was no land downtown for them to plan a new building um, that would have a, that could house a growing medical school. So they looked out west. They looked out on West Markham Street, which was considered really sort of out in the country uh, in the in the 1950s. Um, and the university continued to grow. The, the university in 1951 uh, opened up their uh, School of Pharmacy. It was located at a uh, at the house at 16th and Lewis Streets. Um, but when then 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 in West Mark at West Markham, they they finally could have a building that housed all these different facilities, the new uh, Department of Pharmacy, uh, the School of Medicine, of course, and it would be a, a hospital would be attached to it. So there was land, unused land at the State Hospital for Nervous Diseases, the State Hospital. They got part of that land and then they started the process to raise money and interest in the new project. Newly elected Governor Sid McMath urged for the construction of the new medical center. He, he saw the need uh, for such a facility and he really pushed it through. Um, and later that year, in 1949, the legislature author authorized construction. And in 1951, the legislature voted a two cents a package increase on cigarettes to help fund the, pack, the project. D uh, drawings were drawn, plans were made. Edward Durrell Stone, internationally known and Fayetteville native architect, um, drew up the plans and construction began on the hospital in 1951. Facility opened in 1956. Uh, and you'll see the hospital uh, sort of to the left of this picture. Uh, the Shorey building is the building uh, connected to the hospital um, on the right there. And you'll see the old state hospital uh, at the far right of the picture. And behind, you'll see uh, that was a clinic. Um, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of that clinic, but uh, that was a, a medical clinic located behind there where the VA hospital is now. In 1959, a 10 story student dormitory and student union was open. And for the first time in its history, single and married students have housing on campus. For recreation, the student union offered a lounge, game and music rooms, conference rooms, barbershop and coffee shops. Um, despite the proximity to classes, convenience was not available uh, during the hot summer heat. And it wasn't until the early 1970s that the dorm got air conditioning. Um, as today, recreation and ex extracurricular activities are important to de-stress from daily medical uh, classes. Uh, there's always been sports, um, at the university, at the medical school, organized uh, teams in the early part of its uh, history, medical department football team, and of course their mascot was the medics, the medical department medics. Um, they also had, we also had a band here. Um, so many, many opportunities to uh, de-stress in those, especially in those early years of the medical school. Now the classrooms and hospital rooms were not the only places where learning happens. For many, Peck's Drive-In located just across the street from the medical school on Markham Street uh, provided uh, learning opportunities as well. Uh, Peck's uh, advertised as the coldest beer in town and it still evokes strong memories for those who remember it, not only for the beer, but also the camaraderie and shuffleboard. One professor of radiology and graduate of the medical school believed that he matured not only from the formal education, but also through his times at PEX. He said, I learned a lot of lessons in my life and they're almost as important as my medical degree. In 1973, the Arkansas State Legislature authorized the creation of the area health education centers, the AHECs, they are now known as the regional centers, uh, this was part of Governor Dale Bumper's state for primary health care. 
and the purpose was to focus on medically underserved areas, bolster efforts to retain more graduates from medical school, and to provide more training opportunities for medical students. There were six AHECs established around the state, Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Texarkana, El Dorado, Pine Bluff, and Jonesboro uh, from late 1973 to 1975, and those are still in existence today. Now, after 97 years as part of the University of Arkansas Fayetteville campus, the School of Medicine became its own individual campus known as the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in 1976. Because of that, James L. Dennis, uh, uh, Dr. Dennis became the first chancellor of the newly minted UAMS. The uh, construction, as you probably know, if you've been on campus any length of time, has been a constant on the main campus in Little Rock for years. In 1985, the Arkansas Cancer Research Center was built and later expanded and named after Lieutenant Governor Winthrop Rockefeller. In 1994, a new eye institute named after Springdale trucking magnet Harvey Jones and his philanthropist wife, Bernice, opened. Ten years later, the pa Pat Walker Tower uh, of the I Institute was dedicated. And in 2009, then Governor Mike Beebe dedicated the new hospital, which had been located where, which is located where the former student union and dorms were located. The Northwest campus was dedicated that same year. Uh, and it is continually, continuing to grow um, and taking in, uh, advantage of the uh, student population, uh, those who wanting, wanting to be uh, doctors and, and uh, do training in the Northwest part of the state. They're still taking advantage of that. Um, just a few, uh, some of the people who have, who have graduated from UAMS, uh, Cora Dunn Wassell, class of 1909, received the Navy Cross for saving 12 fellow, fellow soldiers from capture by the Japanese. And his story was made into a movie starring Gary Cooper. Um, you also had Dr. Sam Kuntz, pioneering kidney transplantation surgeon from Lexa over in North, over in Eastern Arkansas. He graduated from UAMS in 1958. He was he performed a, a kidney transplant transplant operation on live television in 1976. You had Ida Jo Brooks, who did not graduate from the medical school because her admission was denied in 1887 because she was a woman but she came back in 1914 and became the first female faculty member of the medical school. And of course, Edith Irby Jones, who was the first African-American to be admitted to, the, to a white Southern public medical school uh, when she was admitted uh, to the School of Medicine in 1948, and also Jocelyn Elders, former U.S. Surgeon General and State Department of Health uh, Director. So through its years, UAMS, it had a rocky start. There were obstacles that were many, many were placed in its way during its time, but UAMS survived and expanded and continues to expand. Um, five different locations that it's been located in Little Rock, six if you count uh, Fayetteville and, and numerous other locations with the regional um, centers around the state. The UAMS today of today was built through hard work, dedication, leadership, and determination, and it continues to be a true asset to Arkansas and her citizens. I'm going to end it there, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Hello. That's, that's, that's me. Hey. <laughs> this is Leah. I'm trying to get you off speaker. Okay, that'll probably help. So we can hear uh, Tim, but he can't hear us unless we're connected on a phone. So while he's getting his phone situated, um, there, can you hear us? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so uh, Dr. Charles Field has been a very active commenter and he's listening in. <laughs> Let me get my phone away. Maybe that helps. Lindy, what should I do with the... Can you pop in some of Dr. Uh, Field's comments and maybe I won't have to be on the I, phone. But he can't, yeah. I don't know that he can see them. Oh, that's right.
Okay. So, um, okay, I'll mute him while I speak and then we'll unmute him to let him speak. Okay, there we go. So Dr. Field was, first of all, we had a, a comment about how cool it is that UAMS that has such high regard and respect in our state was started in an Italian restaurant. I love that. <laughs> I just think that's great. <laughs> And we had a CALS presentation today, or no, well, we did have a CALS presentation about uh, some history in, in Little Rock, which was interesting. And then earlier this week, we had, y'all need to check out our Facebook page. Uh, we had uh, the MacArthur Military Museum of Arkansas, military history, I'm not saying that right, but they showed that same map um, that you showed, the very same map. And I wondered what that tall building that you had circled was because, of course, they focused on the arsenal. And that tall building was St. John's. So you think about how, what a different uh, location in our city UAMS would have been uh, had we been located there. And then how different in our state had it stayed in Fayetteville. I mean, that would have just changed everything. I'll unmute you and mute myself. Yeah, that would have just been amazing uh, and and quite different um, uh, to have the medical school up in Fayetteville. I mean, it would and it's it the medical school drew, you know, from all parts of the state uh, when it was located when it's located in Little Rock. But I'm wondering how that would have uh, done if it had been located in Fayetteville. Of course, the university uh, attracted many people from around the state as well. But it's interesting to, to think what if, if the medical school had been in there and what if it had been located over by MacArthur Park, how that area would be different now uh, than, it is, uh, than it is today. And if, Western, if West Little Rock would have developed, because once the medical school moved out here, of course you had all this other development. You had uh, St. Vincent's building out here in 1957, I believe. Um, so it, it's, it's really, UAMS has really been an anchor at different, in different portions of the city and, and had this growth around it. So it re it's really important to the development of Little Rock and as well as the state economically. Okay, Charles Field um, was commenting during your presentation, so this you have to think about. His, I'm going to tell you some of his comments, and then you have to think back in the order <laughs> that you spoke. But I think he uh, was referring. To, well, he wrote the old Mopac Hospital. What what is he referring to there? So the old Mopac Hospital was uh, the the Maddox Seminary for for. Um, uh, females that eventually became the old Mopac, um, the Mopac Hospital as well, and it was located, as I mentioned, right on the banks of the river, overlooking the river as you're rounding that curve on Cantrell, right next to the Hangar House, which is a restaurant now. It's right next to where the Dillard's headquarters is, just to the west of that. Okay, and then when I think this refers to you were trying to uh, remember the name of the clinic behind the hospital in one of those early, I think from the 40s drawings, and he, he guessed uh, Sheffield Hall. Does that? That's right. That's right. And then a Facebook user is asking us, what is the relationship between UAMS and all of the other medical facilities in Little Rock currently? UAMS has uh, an agreement with, uh, I mean, we cooperate with all of the medical facilities in Little Rock, but we have a, a cooper an agreement with uh, Baptist, I believe, especially up in the Conway Hospital, the, the new Baptist Hospital in Conway, where uh, some of our medical students and, and uh, uh, work there. I, I believe I'm correct in that. But we have we have cooperative agreements with uh, uh, all the medical facilities in Little Rock. It's, uh, uh, you know, we're, it's, it, it, we, you know, we all have to work together. We can't, it's not them versus us or us versus them. It's always a, been a, 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 um, a really collaborative effort in Little Rock. And that includes, you know, I mentioned the Baptist State Hospital, those early hospitals, St. Vincent's Hospital, 
uh, really supported the medical school. I didn't go into that, I didn't have time to, but there's always been a lot of support from the other hospitals uh, with uh, and for UAMS. Um, I, I just am thinking about how we were this such a rural state with 20 doctors in the area in the central part and then maybe a handful around the state and what how what we've become you know today as a still primarily rural state with not a huge population but but little rock has uh, just these centers of excellence um today and i'm just wondering you know they didn't start uh the eye center, the multiple myeloma center, you could spine center. I mean, these didn't start from nothing. They, you know, um, I don't know if, if you wanted to pick one and just talk about one that sort of stands out to you. Let me mute myself just a moment. Go ahead. Well, it's, um, it's interesting, you know, all these, all the different institutions, you know, the Spine Institute, uh, the, the Stevens uh, Spine Institute, you know, that, that support for UAMS has really been there uh, throughout its entire existence, over 140 plus years now. Uh, but the, with these institutes, they, the people have received such good medical care here at UAMS that they were able to, uh, because of their uh, uh, financial standing, they were able to give back to UAMS for the uh, care that they received and, and, you know, in recognition of what UAMS had done for them. That's true with the, the Jackson Spine Institute or the Stevens Spine Institute, excuse me, the, um, the Jones Eye Institute, the Rockefeller uh, Cancer Institute. So it's, it's really been amazing that um, UAMS throughout through its entire existence, even in those early years when it was just really a, a small medical school with its clinical facilities in a hardware store, hardware warehouse, um, that they were able to provide really excellent medical care. And that's um, continued all these 140 plus years. And it's just been really amazing and, and gratifying that the people who have received the medical care uh, and, and been helped by UAMS have also recognized the need to give back to the facility just to build uh, and expand uh, for even more, even better medical facilities and even better care. Well, I'm glad that they uh, value their history. That's important for Arkansas. It's important for Little Rock, um, so much so that they have you um, and <laughs> there. I mean, I think that says a lot. I mean, we need to know where we came from. And it's been a fascinating presentation. I've learned so much from you. I'm so glad that we've worked through some of our sound issues a little bit. <laughs> today um, and that we could hear and see what you had to share with us because it was very, very informative and we just, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me and I, I would like to invite everyone who's listening, if you'd like to come up uh, to, for a tour, we'd love to give you a tour. We're located in the Education 2 building uh, on campus. Uh, I don't think we're quite ready to open uh, to the public just yet, but when we are able to do that, I would love for anyone just to come up and uh, see our facility. I'd love to show you some of our artifacts that we have. Um, and, I, and I didn't mention this at the beginning, and I, and I want to, is that the Historical Research Center really plays a vital role in the preservation of Arkansas history because we are the only archives in the state that focuses specifically on the history of the health sciences in the state. So we really play an important function in the preservation of Arkansas history. So please come and visit us and uh, thank you again for having me here today. I'm sorry, we're having some technical difficulties. Leah, can you unmute yourself? Sorry.
sorry. Um, that was me. That wasn't technical. That was just Leah. Um, I was saying this is on the LifeQuest of Arkansas Facebook page. This is free and open to the public. So please feel free to check us out. And, um, we, and everyone, uh, feel free to pass this on to others because we really appreciate uh, the speakers and, that, and presentations that we have have uh, participate online in our imperfectly virtual world. <laughs> Um, to, that we're living with today, but it's been very informative. And once again, thank you. Um, we may bring you back in person and see how that goes. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.